this is uh, I and I from Unity Web TV, and today we're lucky to have Søren Vendegott from Denmark as our guest. He has been here and had a lecture in the art of living together. It's the most fascinating uh, question in the universe today. And uh, I was on the lecture. It was fascinating uh, and fascinating, simple. Uh, one of the things you talked about was uh, when you're in love. And then you come a period where the love disappears. Da, 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 the, um, what it, not the fascination. The disappears. fascination disappears. Yeah. And then uh, if you if you don't like the other person anymore, yeah, they become a crisis. Yes, and you say, oh, then it's the work is starting, and then don't go from each other before. Yeah, exactly. So what? Yeah. Why do you think this is important? Um, it's like we can learn something from our romantic relationship, and what we can learn is that we are not really ourselves. So we assume that we are the person we experience ourselves to be. But this person often comes in, in big trouble in romantic relationships. Wow. So, so uh, because it, it's, a, it's an illusion, basically. So when, when you stop and ask, why am I suffering? Why do I have th these problems? You can, you can um, analyze this you, this me and ask, who am I? And uh, when you do this, you can see that the, the person you assume yourself to be is not really you, uh, but something that you have come to, 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 to believe yourself to be through your life. So it's like we have a personality, a person, that is a construct coming from all our experiences, and in the end we believe that we are this person. But in a, a romantic relationship we often experience that uh, love doesn't really work, and 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 this person I am cannot really get close to another person. So it's like there's something in between us. Mm -hmm. I have my heart, and you have your heart, but something is coming between us. And yes. and this, the, what comes between us is all, uh, you know, the lies and the stories we believe, in and all the illusions that we carry, and all the things that that uh, uh, that basically we have in, in our mind, which needs to. To, to be seen and, and let go of. So, so I see the, uh, a romantic relationship as a washing machine. Okay. That uh, we can put our persons in there <coughs> and then we can, we can wash all the dirt out. And in the end we are very pure and very innocent and very lovely. <coughs> but but that, uh, we can only do that if we accept the suffering from the, the washing process. Yes. Uh, the washing process. So it's, it's like, it's like uh, Nobody really like to see that we are that we are fake, that we are not honest, that we are uh, have have lies uh, that we believe in and, and live according to. So so there's a, a pain in looking into this, but the moment we accept this pain and start start uh, inquiring into ourselves, we can easily see that we have all these stupid beliefs that yes. actually makes it impossible for us to, to, to live mm. in these relationships and make yes. them work. Yes, because you're talking a lot about uh, everything that's in the mind. What you have in the mind makes your feelings. Yeah, what, what you believe, source you believe in, becomes your experience. Mm. So it's like if you believe you're worthless and you tell yourself every day, I'm so worthless, then you'll feel worthless. Mm. If, you, if you start to doubt this, this idea that you're worthless, then your feeling of being worthless will go away. And uh, there are so many experiences we have of ourselves that comes from these phony, stupid, crazy ideas we have. Mm. And, and you know, maybe when we were three years old or five years old, we learned from some things that happened that we were stupid or worthless or weak or whatever. And now we carry these ideas. And as long as we believe in them, they will, they will be a problem for mm. us in our relationship. Yes. And but you also you don't see these uh, ideas, uh, your ego before you're in a relationship. Exactly. And that's why a relationship is very important to deal with your own problems. Yeah, and, and especially sexuality. Yes. Uh, because when you become really close and intimate, and um, and getting deeply involved uh, sexually in each other, then all these egoic uh, things will become uh, even more visible if you are willing to look for them. So it's like the more intimate and, and close you get, 
the easier it is to see your impurities. Because right, and talk, uh, talk with each other. Yeah, yeah, then it's less <coughs> harder to talk, of course, because if you're not talking, if you're not sharing, if you're not analyzing it together, then you cannot uh, get a clear understanding of it. Mm. So, so this process of, of, of sharing and talking and, 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 and looking at it is very important. And if you can do it together, it's much more powerful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's so simple. So it's uh, but it's, it's simple to think it and say it, but in the real life, it's uh, it's not it's simple so because there's a lot of pain in it, uh, mm. not physical pain, but emotional pain. Mm. Um, nobody likes to to lose control or to 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 feel that the the person they are is like <coughs> falling apart. Mm. All these experiences coming when when the ego is, is like threatened or falling. Uh, these the, the, these feelings are, are are pretty awful. So normally we protect our ego. Mm -hmm. We don't like to go there. We don't like to really explore you know, the reasons for for us not functioning well. So what we do is that we blame the partner. Mm -hmm. Say my partner has this flaw and that that fault and and this is bad, you know. And uh, it's so much easier to to blame the partner yeah. than to stop and look into yourself and ask, mm. you know, what in me contributes to these problems. Yes. Uh, so I think that that uh, our love life is a great chance for really coming to understand ourselves and know ourselves better. Yeah, so the, the message is not leave your partner bef before you have, uh, yeah, how, how long you have, <laughs> can yeah, have, have to work before yeah, you see if it's going or not. No, basically I say that you should appreciate your suffering. Because your suffering is the only way you can you can be wiser. So when suffering comes in a relationship, in, in modern day life, what we do is that we break up and mm. run. Mm. So what I say is that st stop a moment, you know. That now now suffering has come. Uh, so instead of, of just breaking up and run, uh, run away, stop and analyze what's happening here. And and uh, if you understand that there is a gift of understanding in the suffering, that actually suffering is the only way that you can learn uh, about yourself, uh, suffering is the key to the deep understanding, mm. then you can stay in this relationship in spite of the suffering and you can learn what you need to learn. Uh, and in the end, if you dare to stay and if you can appreciate the suffering and the, the process of, 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 of cleansing and getting rid of all these false ideas and illusions, then you can experience a new level of love mm. where you are completely av available and, and open uh, for each other. Mm. And this is, in my own life, this has been really amazing to, to experience, that there is like a completely other level of love. Yes. And uh, when you're willing to let go of, of the illusion of who you are, then you can open your up, up to a partner in a completely different way. Yes. But is this the same thing as we're working at this center? We're, we're talking about traumas, so you're peeling the onion. Yeah, you can see that. Is it that. a little bit the same thing when you yeah, yeah, yeah except, except that I take the onion and throw it out. Okay. The whole onion. Okay. <laughs> because, <laughs> because you can say the onion is the personality and there are many layers of traumas. Yes. And in the, in the sense of the onion it is like conception or the first traumas, uh, maybe in the womb. Um, and this is the, the seed of the personality that grows in layers until it's a big onion, and, and which we, we assume to be me. So when we peel the onion and we, we uh, take all these layers of traumas uh, and integrate them and, 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 and layer after layer go back earlier and earlier in childhood. Now this is one way of doing it, but what I suggest is that instead of working 100 years in peeling the onion, you can do it on you and ask yourself, am I this? Mm -hmm. uh, am, I, am I this person? Or, you know, maybe I'm something much more divine. Uh, maybe I'm love, maybe I'm consciousness, maybe I'm God, you know, something much bigger than just this yes, onion. Yes. Uh, so, so you don't have to identify with this onion and peel it so thoroughly. You can stop and you can ask, am I this onion? And if you're not this onion, you just put it down and say, I'm not that onion. You know, I don't have to peel it even. I just have to leave it. 
Uh, and then it sounds very simple, but what they, when you if you do that, uh, you, s you still have your traumas there, and you yeah, but they're not really my traumas. They're they are traumas attached or to the personality. So of course the traumas are still there. Um, but the moment that I place the onion on the table and say, it's not my onion. It's just a onion, mm. a an onion. You know, it's, it's just, it's just like a phenomenon. Um, then, then from this position of looking at the onion from from outside, uh, I can analyze all these traumas and events in a very objective and neutral way, okay. and, and 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 feelings, strong negative feelings from the life means might still might still appear in consciousness, but it's not my feelings anymore. It's like uh, there might be sadness. But it's not me being sad. It's just sadness because I'm not the onion. So, 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 so these traumas are still being processed and integrated, but from much more neutral and detached position. Uh, and and sadness, if you really surrender to it, it might become something like compassion. Uh, you feel with every suffering being in the world, uh, as the Buddhists are talking about. Uh, so, so, so the moment that you really surrender into these feelings and just allow them to be what they want to be, they often transform into something completely different and which is very beautiful and uh, and connected with, with, with a deep wisdom. Yeah, so you're saying that be in your feelings. If you're sad, depressed, be in your yeah, sadness. It, it, it's, it's not my feelings. No? It's just feelings. Okay. This, this is uh, the basic thing. If I say this is my feelings, yeah. I have the personality okay, yeah, yeah. which owns the feelings. Okay, yeah. But I say I'm here. I'm consciousness, and these feelings they flow in this in my in my space. They come and go. I'm not the master of them. I'm not controlling them. I'm allowing them to come and go as the clouds come and go in, in, on a sunny day. Uh, I'm I'm not bothered about them. They they I welcome them and I wish them goodbye when they leave. Uh, uh, it's it's no big deal, yeah. simply. So so, for instance, I had a brother who died you know, when I was ten years old. We were swimming together and he drowned and it was very tragic. Uh, and for many years, I felt very guilty. Uh, but now, you know, if guilt comes, it can still be some feeling of guilt, and I can have this thought I was a kid and I couldn't help him and all that. Mm -hmm. But but basically, it's not my guilt even. It's just some guilt associated with with this structure, this event, but it's not anything personal. So, so these feelings come and go, and I I I, I don't mind really. That's uh, yeah, an interesting view. Um, <laughs> we're in, we're in the, the <laughs> we are close to ending it. <laughs> yes. So we can do one more. But, uh, no, 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 it's fine. So you want me to, to say something to people? Huh? Yeah, now I want. To <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, yes. yeah, let me do I that. want you to tell a little bit. Uh, do you have any message to the world? Very big. Um, how do you get peace in the world? Uh, how? What? Uh, what can we do? Yeah, but I, I think everybody has a partner, or will have a partner soon. Uh, so I think if we can, if we can use these. Uh, relationships which has so much energy in them for everybody so much that they t take so much attention and people invest so much in them if we can use them for something good like purifying ourselves developing our ability to, to love and, and 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 be humble and present uh, I think we have done a good job so, so this could be a, a nice a nice way of starting yeah. like this global revolution of consciousness or whatever you want to, yeah. to start. Okay. Uh, now we should show you books here. CERN uh, <laughs> has written a lot of new books yeah. about holistic medicine and all these things. Yeah. But I'll, on, the, on the website I'll put his mail address and so on. So, yeah, so I'll just uh, thank you very much. And thank I'll you. Thank you for, for inviting me. Yeah. Uh, Looking to forward to getting you in the next year, you said. It's yeah. a long time. Yeah, yeah. Then 2012 is over. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you so much. <laughs>